Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for October 13th, 2022. Glad that you are with me today. Um, I also want to apologize for the audio was a little bit, um, had an echo on it when I was on camera. I think maybe I have fixed it, uh, but apologize for that. So let's go ahead and get started. Today is National No Broad Day. Also, Disaster Day, International Day for Disaster Reduction, International Day for Disaster Risk Reduction, English Language Day, and International Civility for the Girl Child Day. Let's go ahead and get started. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Today, we are starting with Genesis 29, verse 31. So, um, we've been following Jacob, who's a bit of a trickster. He's gone to Laban, his uncle, to find a wife, has found Rachel, um, and then ended up marrying Leah, her older daughter, with weak eyes or cow eyes or lovely eyes. Um, So now he's married to two women, one of which he definitely loves more. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but let's let's kind of see the, the first set. Listen for God's word to speak to you. When the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, God opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Leah conceived and bore a son. She named him Reuben. For she said, Because the Lord has looked on my affliction, surely now my husband will love me. She conceived again and bore a son and said, Because the Lord has heard that I am hated, he has given me this son also. She named him Simeon. Again she conceived and bore a son and said, Now this time my husband will be joined to me because I have borne him three sons. Therefore, he was named Levi. She conceived again and bore a son and said, This time I will praise the Lord. Therefore, she named him Judah. Then she ceased bearing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, so we are focusing on Leah, who is, remember, the unloved wife of the two wives currently of um, Jacob. And this is a journey, but we have to kind of pay attention to what's going on here. So first of all, as unfortunate as it is in this very... um, patriarchal society. Women were treated basically as cattle. They were property. They were viewed that way. And their primary responsibility, their primary worth, was tied up in the ability to bear children, specifically sons. So that's that's the big sort of linchpin of what's going on here. God looks at Leah... God looks at the one who is disregarded, the one who is not loved as much, and God opens her womb, which gives us a glimpse into who God is, right? This is the God of liberation. This is the God who sees the downtrodden, sees the one who is viewed with contempt, the one with weak eyes, the one who is unloved, and God has a preferential option for her, as opposed to Rachel. Uh, Rachel is loved by Jacob, right? She gets all the attention, Leah doesn't, and so God gives her the attention. That's that's one thing that we have to see here. This is, this is a, about God's character. God focuses on those who are downtrodden. God focuses on the poor and the weak, and the marginalized, 
And that's really hard to hear when we are those who are so often centered. But this is the God that we see throughout scripture. So that's one thing. And we see the story of Leah. Now, the story is being told through her bearing of children, specifically sons, in this this small section, she bears four sons. So she is well, according to the culture, right? She's very valuable. She has borne four sons. And she names all of them, and all of their names have meaning. This is a really um, key sort of point about especially Hebrew scripture. Names are deeply meaningful. They will tell us a whole lot about what's going on. And so in this relatively simple story where Leah bears four sons, there is a definite story arc. So let's go through it. First, Leah bears the first son, Reuben. Now, Reuben, she says, um, so Reuben's name specifically means see a son, right? Look, a son, behold, a son. And she says, because the Lord has looked on my affliction, surely now my husband will love me. What? I mean, just a short little thing that she says there. What pathos, what what emotion is in there? She names her son, see, look, a son, right? Because God has looked on me and look, I have borne you a son, right? Maybe you should have a little bit more favor for me because I know you like Rachel more, but I've borne you a son. Look, see, see? She is so desiring this, um, just a relationship. Well, she bear she... Uh, conceives again, and this time um, she names the son uh, Simeon, Shema. And she says, because the Lord has heard that I am hated, God has given me a son also. Think of that, right? She goes from, see, God has favored me. Look, look, I've borne you a son, Jacob, to, well, because I am hated by my own husband, God has taken pity on me. That's a journey. Again, she she conceives and bears a son. This one is named Levi. And she says, now this time my husband will be joined to me. The word joined is liwa, like Levi. Perhaps now that this, that I've borne these three sons, there's going to be a connection between me and my husband, right? Maybe he will actually see me and love me and be connected to me. This is a story of a woman who is very much not loved. She desires to have this connection to her husband, and she does not have it. And she's doing the one thing that was in her power in order to make that happen, and it's still not happening. Imagine that story for her. Imagine that that journey, that path that is just suggested in these handful of sentences. She bears a fourth son. This one is named Judah. She says, this time I will praise the Lord. Praise the, the word for praise, Hoda, sounds like this Huda, this Judah. 
this fourth son, right, she names, I will praise the Lord. You notice that that's, this is the first son that she has named, not in reference to her husband. The first ones are, look, see, see my husband, I have borne you a son. I was hated by my husband, so therefore I have borne a son. Perhaps now that I have borne a son, I will have connection with my husband. At this point, she's no longer being defined by that broken and toxic relationship. She's being defined in a different relationship. I will praise the Lord. The relationship now with God is more important, perhaps. And here in these names of just four sons, we see this whole, I mean, this could be a whole story of Leah's journey through these first four pregnancies and births. There's not a lot written about women specifically in the Bible, right? Because again, it comes from this patriarchal culture. And it's already a fairly sort of succinct type of of storytelling that doesn't give a whole lot of details. But in the details that are given, we see a much more full story. Through these names, we are getting a glimpse and these sort of statements about what the names mean. We get a glimpse into the inner life of this female character. In fact, more of a glimpse of the inner life of her character than we really get of anybody else. What did our our inner lives look like? What are the struggles that we go through and how do we show them through our actions? What has been your journey, whether through childbearing or having children or not having children, because that is a different story. How can you see into the inner life of someone else through their actions or through maybe even the naming of children? And what does that tell you about them and how there might be connection? Let us go ahead and start gather together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning and we will live this day in joy and praise. God of all mercies, we praise you that you have brought us to this new day, brightening our lives with the dawn of promise and hope in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for ministries of discernment and governance. Those who teach and those who learn.
the community of faith in your church. Reconciliation in our relationship. All gifts of healing and forgiveness. All gifts of healing and forgiveness. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks for the blessing of children, of relationships, of desire for connection. For the journeys that we go through Merciful God, strengthen us in our prayer that we may lift up the brokenness of this world for your healing and share in the saving love of Jesus Christ. Especially we pray for the church in Europe. Safe, clean, and renewable energy. those who are lonely and forgotten. Those from whom we are estranged. All who glorify you in worship and service. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for Danielle, who uh, daughter-in-law of Sandy, who is recovering from a mastectomy and reconstruction surgery. For Jan Ann, who has COVID. For Ernie and Kelly, who have long COVID. For friends of Beverly's, as well as Beverly's brothers. For Steve, a former co-worker of Bill's. For the family and friends of Jean. For Mary, Bill's sister, who had her defibrillator replaced. For Mr. Ed, who is back home. For Donna, recovering from a double mastectomy. For Tom, Sharon's brother, who continues to be in poor health. For all those who are on our hearts and our minds. Eternal God, you are the source of every gift and the fountain of all blessing. Give us such joy in living and such peace in serving Christ that we may gratefully make use of all your blessings and joyfully seek our risen Lord in everyone we meet. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen.
Now, so far as it depends on us, let us live peaceably with all. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button, as well as going to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, or also going to our uh, Facebook and Instagram account. You can also subscribe to this daily prayer through Substack. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church, USA, 2018 edition, and our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Thank you for joining me. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you next time. Bye.